okay good morning sir okay so uh, good morning everyone my name is ms shruti munde assistant professor from extc department welcome to the workshop on design thinking critical thinking and innovation design organized by electronics and telecommunication engineering department in coordination with institute innovation council of bpms marshi parshuram college of engineering vaneshwar being an engineer engineering institute this topic design thinking critical thinking and innovation think uh, design will help us find and work for a human centered approach for innovation it is my pleasure to take the opportunity to welcome our today's resource person mr sarvesh karkhanes an entrepreneur feature inventor tedx speaker maker science communicator and a computer scientist He is currently a graduate student at Mellon University's Integrated Innovation Institute. His invention of medical device having potential to save lives of premature babies was featured in news internationally. Mr. Sarvesh also received an award at a conference at MIT Media Lab for his project about rapid prototyping of medical devices. He is also a certified MIT master trainer in educational mobile computing. Additionally he is a contributor to Arduino project working with 3D printers he has also completed MIT's on campus summer certificate program in additive manufacturing human centered design design thinking and constructionism are some of his topic of interest he has been regularly invited to serve as a judge or mentor at various events and hackathons organized by well known institutions such as harvard mit and google he has mentored several award winning teams at highly reputed health tech hackathons such as mit grand hack he also founded a group of innovators during covid-19 pandemic to find solution to the crisis through innovations members from his group provided thousands of 3d printed pp gear worldwide his covid-19 community efforts were also featured in the news it is an honor and privilege for us to have you sir here with us today i would also now like to welcome our respected principal mr avinash pawar sir our department hod's faculty members and students i am sure we will be enriched by your workshop today once again i welcome you all for the function Now I would like to request Mr. Sarvesh Karkhane sir to start with the workshop. Yes, thank you everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me uh, for this workshop. Uh, I'm really honored to uh, be part of it and sharing some of my thoughts and some of my own learnings with you, which I have been applying throughout all my. a innovation career till now and i will be i'm still a student okay so i'm always learning so whatever i have learned i'll share it with you and i would like this uh, presentation to be more interactive uh, so if you ha have any question in between please let me know in between and uh, also i can speak marathi so i always think that uh, it is always better to learn in your own language so even if you ask me questions in marathi that's amazing for me uh, because i am uh, myself uh, graduated from a school uh, where marathi was the first language of instruction so marathi medium school was my school for high school cool so uh, let me now share my screen and let us start learning about design thinking okay so let's start about our presentation and our learning about design thinking so today we are covering three distinct topics which are design thinking critical thinking and innovation thinking although they sound different but they are interlinked so design thinking 
is interlinked to critical thinking and both of them are interlinked to innovation thinking because for innovations you need design thinking you need critical thinking so it is an amalgamated effort that you need to make to come up with a product so a brief introduction about me uh, i'm a maker I'm I'm an Arduino open source project contributor. I also work with 3D printers and uh, I like real world applications of technologies. I'm also a certified MIT master trainer, uh, which is a part of the MIT app Inventor project from the CSEL or the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. Uh, some of my innovation uh, projects and my innovation background. So um, I am inventor of a medical device that has potential to save lives of premature babies. Uh, I also worked on a COVID-19 X-ray detection app uh, during the pandemic. Uh, the app that can detect just by using X-rays of the patients. I also conducted a few workshops for innovators during COVID-19 to create IoT oxygen and hard waters. So these are some of my projects. And some of my projects such as the uh, device for premature babies has been featured in international news. Uh, and today I am a graduate student at the Carnegie Mellon University uh, in the Technology Ventures program. And I'm also the part, one of the part of the Moon Ranger project where we are building a robot and that would be sent to Moon in 2023 by NASA. So I'm currently uh, a part of the team of the Moon Ranger project. Now let's start thinking about design. So what is design? So in colloquial terms, uh, when you're a kid, when you are told about design, you think about a drawing uh, or a sculpture. Of course, that is design. But if you think or if you see from from a broader term, uh, from a very broad a global perspective, you see that everything that is made easier for people, it, it is made using design. So design is everywhere. Uh, engineering needs design. Uh, whatever, the law needs design. The government needs design. Architecture needs design. So design is not a term which is confined to a smaller place or only to art or only architecture. It is the kind of place which is found everywhere. If you uh, if you today you'd go uh, brush your teeth uh, before sleeping and you would see that the handle of the brush is making very ergonomic to so that you can easily hold it. That is design. If, if you're sitting on a chair now, that chair is designed in such a way that it feels comfortable for you on, and on your back. That is design. So design is everywhere in the world. And if you invent something, and if you need to get it to the market, and if you make a product out of it, then what you need is design. Design is the thing that makes the products work. In the world. So let's go to design thinking. Now, there have been many processes that were used to come to an efficient design. And those processes were developed and many shortcomings were found in those processes. So a few designers a few decades ago came, came up with a very solid process that can be used to design any kind of product or any kind of service, which is known as the design thinking today. So design thinking is a kind of thinking process which you use to come up to a solution for anything. 
it is not confined to a physical product it is not confined to a service or a software service design thinking can be used for from for everything right from creating governments to creating technology products that is how effective and how powerful the design thinking is uh, the development so many institutions uh, then started developing design thinking but one of the institutions which is well known today for the development in this area yeah, is the design school of stanford university so stanford university is uh, a popular is one of the top most universities in the world and it has the design school uh, which has a whole department that researches on design and thinking and uh, it is also connected to one of the popular design firms which is uh, which is IDEO and the director of IDEO is also a professor at the Stanford Design School and they have been continuously developing uh, this field uh, both from industrial as well as academic perspective now let's see the process in brief the design thinking process, but from very simple terms. So what we do in design thinking? So we address a problem from a specific point of view, but we ask these three questions one by one. The questions are why, what and how? So if you are finding a solution to a problem, you first ask yourself why are you focusing on this problem why this problem needs to be solved why there is a need to find this into the problem that time would get some input uh, about what the problem problem actually is and why people are looking for solutions to it then you move to what what is about actually finding the solutions or finding a wireframe for the solution. So you don't need to have a full overview of the solution, but you need to have an idea about the solution that is covered in this what section. And finally, you focus on the intricacies of the solution, which is the how. So Finally, you come to a final solution uh, to the how, but this process doesn't stop there. This is a continuous process. Now, I have elaborated you this process in very simple terms, but now let's go to the actual process, which has five steps. Which are those steps? So the steps are empathize, Define, ID, yet prototype, and test. And as you can see from the arrows, this the whole process is not a continuous process. You always go back to the uh, uh, to the steps which were there before, and then you refine those steps, and then you again proceed to the next step. So it is a very non-linear process, although it is. Uh, it is very defined process. So it is a specific process, but which is non-linear. So let's, uh, let's first see what are these five steps. So the first step is empathize. So that provides us why, the answers to the question why, why we are focusing on the problem. But design thinking approaches the problems from the empathy point of view. So you should have an empathy for finding solutions to the problem. Uh, then you define the problem. After you empathize with the problem, you define the problem. The definition is from a very broad point, point of view. It doesn't provide you solutions, but it defines actual problem. Then you ideate. What is ideate? Ideate is uh, thinking about ID 
idea to come up to a solution. It is not a whole solution. You come up to an idea, you you create um, uh, you create some charts in your mind about how to go to the solution from that idea, and that is basically this ideate step. After ideating, you go to the prototype step. In that step, you create an actual prototype. That could be a machine, that could be a software, uh, that could be a service. Um, there needs to be a prototype which you then test. So you create a prototype, you test it, and again, you go back to the step such as define. So once you tested a solution, you again go to the define step, and then you see whether your definitions were correct, whether there needs to be um, any changes or improvements uh, in that definition, and you again uh, sail through the whole process. So this process never stops, and you keep on creating new and new and improved solutions. So since this process is continuous, uh, this process becomes very, very attractive and extremely powerful. You are able to find solutions and not just able to find solutions, but improve them continuously through this design thinking process. Uh, now let's see uh, this design thinking process from some examples. So as I mentioned before, during the COVID-19 pandemic, I created an app that doctors could use to detect the COVID-19 infection in their patients just by using x-rays of the patients. So this app utilizes artificial intelligence and machine learning, and um, it uses a model that was trained by me, the artificial intelligence model and then utilizes that model inside that app to see the possibility of COVID-19 infection through that X-ray. Now, this app just needs simple chest X-rays which are found anywhere. And it predicts the COVID-19 infections with really high degree of accuracy, which was more than 99%. So let's see the design thinking process in this healthcare app. So let's go to the empathize step. So since we have seen the whole pandemic, it is easier for us in this example to understand what, what the empathize means. You, When the pandemic was going on, you saw the news of people uh, getting admitted to hospitals, people dying due to this COVID-19 uh, uh, infection and you empathize with those people. This empathy, this empathy towards those people suffering from COVID-19 motivates you and inspires you to address this problem through your innovation skills. So then when you empathize with the COVID-19 patients, you go to the define step. So, there were many uh, definitions to the problem, but um, one of the definition which I came up to address this problem was uh, there was a delay in finding or in detecting the COVID-19 infection, which was leading to very advanced stages of the infection. And then doctors were finding it really difficult to treat the patients. So my definition was the delay in finding, uh, a delay in detecting the COVID-19. Then I went to ideate step. Then I start finding and thinking about the solutions, which solutions can I come up with? And the first thing I thought, or the first thought was, it should be really accessible doctors should be able to use my solutions in no time. How I can make the access, uh, this solution accessible? I'll use mobile phones. So I made a mobile app, and then I created this wireframe for this app. 
So if you are not familiar with wireframes, so it is just a drawing of the user interface of the mobile app. It is not an app. You just use a paper and a pen and create a drawing. The wireframe, which is the part of ideate stage in the design thinking process. Then you go to the prototype stage. Now here you can see a few logic blocks from the MIT App Inventor platform. So I did not code the whole the whole app. I just used the MIT App Inventor platform, which is a very fast and efficient way to of prototyping mobile apps. And then I came up with this app. So you can see this app screen, which shows the X-ray and which shows the probabilities of uh, the patient having uh, a COVID-19 infection. However, this was not a linear process. First, I defined the pandemic. The pandemic is uh, affecting so many people. Then I ideated and my ideas were so broad. I did not have the idea of having a mobile app till then. Then I again went to define and I started narrowing the scope of my solution. And that is when after a few trials, I came up to the conclusion that uh, diagnosis of COVID-19 is one of the important tasks in this pandemic. And that is how I came up to the solution. So this was never a process which is very linear. Uh, and uh, this is one of the uh, use case matrix. So it shows how useful my solution was. So you can see that my solution uh, uh, was very fast as compared to other solutions such as the PCR tests. My, uh, my solution had very high portability because it could be used on any kind of mobile device such as a mobile phone or a tablet. Other solutions such as the RT-PCR uh, lab tests are very low portable because you need to go to the lab and the labs need to use big machines. The costs Obviously, the cost for a mobile app was low, but the cost for the lab test is obviously very high as compared to the use of the mobile apps. And over that, I was providing the mobile lab experimental braces for free to any doctors who are treating COVID-19 infections. So essentially, this, uh, uh, this solution was free. Uh, if you exclude the cost of x-rays and still x-rays too are very inexpensive. Then practical usability. It was very high because doctors could use this in their office. Doctors cannot uh, do the RT-PCR test in their office, but they can use an app in their office. And latest technologies. It had artificial intelligence and machine learning and obviously the solutions do not have such kind of latest technologies. So on all these scales or in this matrix, my solution was much more desirable than the, uh, than the existing solutions at that time. Um, similarly, uh, the moon robot mission. So as I, as I told you that I'm a part of the moon ranger mission where we are actually actually build a robot and NASA is going to send a robot on moon, we can, we can use the same uh, design thinking process. So here, uh, here my idea was to like give you an exercise and come, you come up with solutions. So uh, if you're able to like uh, turn on your mic, can someone tell me that how you can empathize with finding a solution or working on this project? Can anyone?
tell me about how you can empathize with it. If you're able to start your mic. OK, fine. I'll just go ahead because even I'm not sure whether you're like able to. Uh, speak here and use a mic. So sure, so. Yeah, is someone speaking? Yeah. Yes, may, may I speak, sir? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I, I would say that uh, uh, there is huge population on Earth, so uh, we, mm -hmm. we require uh, some more planets so that we can uh, transfer some of our population there and uh, uh, the yeah. human community can survive there. Exactly. So, so that could be like one solution to the empathize problem that someday humans might have to travel to other planets. So it is better to explore the planets in advance using our robots. So that could be an empathize part. Then, uh, yeah, I'll again get this question. So can you define the problem? So it, it was really nice. So can you define the problem? Uh, the problem is uh, there is a huge population on Earth. Uh, yeah, and right. Earth so is, uh, actually, burdened with the population. Excess so population. we are like empathizing with, but, but can we like, yes, but can we like, de okay, yes. So can we define the problem and narrow it to something that we could to achieve? Uh, human beings require additional space to survive. Yes, that could be the definition. So then we ideate about, we go on idea, ideating about the problem. So uh, then we might find different solutions. Uh, those solutions could be to, uh, finding solutions to humans to survive using water or growing food on other planets. And then as you ideate, you find uh, a problem. That problem is that you do not have a platform to experiment on other planets. So then you again go to the define step. And you say that we need a platform to preemptively uh, preemptively survey the resources that other planets have. So as you can see, we are again going going back and forth uh, throughout this process. Again, at the defined stage, and we have narrowed the scope because since we need to like, like find uh, future places on other planets to for humans to survive or to stay, we need to find a way to know about the resources on those planets. Then again, we go to ID8 stage. Now we have a very narrow defined scope that we need the platform to know the resources on those planets. So those resources uh, are re really remote. We cannot see them or we cannot feel them from the Earth. So what we can do, we can send a robot. So now you are at an idea stage where you are thinking about making a robot to send it to other planets. Then you go to the prototype stage. That is when you actually start building the robot. So we have, uh, we think that the actual projects are the whole projects. But no, the actual uh, physical and ideating stage or the building stage starts at prototype. Not ideating, sorry, building stage start at prototype. And then you create, then you test it. So how we are testing our robot is that we are creating, uh, uh, we are creating a landscape which is similar to Moon's landscape. Uh, we are pouring really uh, 
we are pouring sand, uh, which has small, small particles, and we are testing our robot on the sand. So that is the testing phase. And then you uh, go back and forth and create a prototype. And finally, you have one viable solution. So we're still building our robot. So we're still going through all these stages. But at some point, we would have a viable solution, which we could actually hand it over to map and then send it to the moon. So that is how this design thinking process works. So, uh, so I provide you a conceptual overview of this design thinking process. But let's see how we actually perform all these tasks in these processes. Um, as I told you, we just have to empathize, we have to define, we have to ideate and prototype and then test. But there are some uh, specific design methodologies that have been uh, researched by these experts and these professors and academicians, which we can effectively use to sail through this whole time thinking process. For example, when you are at the empathize stage, you can interview people, you can shadow people. So interviewing means actually, so for example, if I'm finding solutions to COVID for COVID-19 pandemic, I actually go to people who have survived COVID-19 infection, and then I interview them. Or I, I sit with a doctor uh, that is called shadowing, sit with a doctor uh, while he's uh, looking at the reports of his patients, and then I ask some questions. Then I seek a more expert advice to understand the problem, and that is how I empathize with the problem and the people who are suffering the problem. And that is the point when I know that I, I would be able to improve the lives or improve the situation for these people who are suffering or the people getting affected. And at that time, I also need to be totally non-judgmental. I need to see the problems from a very third uh, third person's point of view. So these are some of the techniques which are used in the empathize stage. Then there are some techniques in the define stage. For example, there are personas. So what are personas? So personas are the stories of the people which you can create. They might be real stories or they might be fictional stories, but stories which uh, revolve around people to more precisely understand the problem. For example, a COVID-19 uh, example, I can, um, I can have a story of a person who was affected by COVID-19 and who was uh, a daily wager. So he had uh, he had to face financial issues in addition to the health issues that were due to the COVID-19. So that is a great persona. Then you create the role of issues, you create a decision chart, you create a chart for challenges and also pain points. So challenges are the definitions of the actual challenges faced by the people in the personas. Similarly, pain points are the data points, which are the problems faced by these people. So now by gathering all this data, you can come up with very finite and very uh, narrow definitions uh, for problems, which then you can work upon. Then, the third phase is the ideate phase. So the techniques in the ideate phase, some of the techniques are share your ideas, uh, then diverge and converge from your ideas, then prioritize the ideas, etc. So you actually have to sit in front of a board, uh, a story board, your blackboard, and think about those ideas. You need to create big diagrams, 
uh, you can create uh, uh, big, you can even use like origami or sculpting to do the ideating. If you are building uh, a, an actual product or a physical product, uh, then you go to in prototype, you can create the mockups if you have using the software. Uh, uh, and also another example of mockup is the moon surface that we have created for a robot. So that is how you create some mockups and test your solution on a very small pilot scale. You have to keep it really simple. And in this prototype stage, you are going to fail. And you need to keep in mind that you are going to fail you need to face the failures from a scientist's point of view. So, for example, when you fail, you need to be very diligent about uh, documenting the failures. And then again, you can go to the next step or you can go to any step before that. Uh, and this is an iterative process. So you need to be very quick in iterating your solutions. So that was the prototype stage, which is the fourth stage. And the fifth stage is the test. So in, in the test stage, you see what works and what not. So similar to prototype stage, you are going to fail here. But the failure during the testing is different from prototyping. In testing, you're actually thinking about using that product uh, in the actual situation. So for example, if you have a product which is going to the market, then in the test stage, you have to look at the product from the actual end user's point of view. So that is how you do the testing. You can do role playing, you can uh, do uh, understanding the usage from actual customer's point of view and you can use many of these practical methods to test your product or your solution. And again, you need to iterate very quickly. You need to quick on, uh, you need to uh, keep on testing. You need to find different uh, ways of testing. And again, you need to go to the previous stages very quickly and come up with improvements. So the whole design thinking is all about improvements. If you understand, uh, if you understand the consequences of your solution, then you will also be able to understand how it improves uh, someone's lives or how it improves the improves upon the existing solutions. So that is how the design thinking process works, and that is how this design thinking process is very powerful in finding uh, new solutions, very innovative solutions. So let's now see the next part uh, of uh, our lecture, which is the critical thinking. So what is critical thinking? So critical thinking is rigorously questioning your ideas and assumptions. You should keep on questioning everything that you know. Whatever you know might be or might not be the case. So you have to keep questioning. You need to ask questions like why, why it works, why it doesn't work, what is it, what problem, um, I'm uh, facing or what problem I'm defining uh, and then how, how I'm going to find solution, how I'm going to improve on the solutions. So you need to keep on asking questions, you need to keep on question the ideas which are already there. You cannot assume a thing, you need to keep on asking. One example, as your engineering students, you might be able to understand that one example I can give you is about the Newtonian physics versus the Einstein physics. So as you know, many, uh, many parts of the Einstein's physics do question 
uh, and invalidate the Newtonian physics. But if Einstein had said that, oh, what the solutions I came up with do not conform with the Newtonian physics, so I should be scrapping it, then we would have never found all this quantum theory and all these new solutions. So that is why you need to question the ideas and you, do, you need to question all the assumptions that do you have. Then, in critical thinking, you do not accept anything without a deeper reflection. Because someone tells you that it is, it is this like this, and it has, has been always like this, you don't uh, you don't just assume it. You you need to have a deeper reflection about everything. For example, uh, when the COVID-19 uh, pandemic came and people started finding solutions, uh, the big companies said that individuals or the indi small companies might not be able to find solutions to COVID-19 in pandemic. However, even in individuals who worked, individual engineers who had 3D printers or CNC machines worked during the pandemic and they manufactured their own PPE gears and they provided those PPE gears to thousands of doctors and frontline workers. So they did not accept the idea that they cannot help in this pandemic. They, they gave they started reflecting and they started innovating and came up with actual viable ideas. Then you need to have a realistic reflection of user's experience as part of critical thinking. You cannot just assume that my user of a product or service might be thinking like this or like that. No, you need to have a realistic reflection. And for that, like I mentioned before in design, and thinking process, you need to talk to people, you need to communicate. Communication is a key. So you need to communicating with the people and you need to talk to people and you need to understand their own convictions. So that is how you go on doing the critical thinking. Now the next part, which is connecting, connected to this, uh, design thinking and critical thinking is innovation thinking. So what is innovation thinking? Innovation thinking is the ability to come up with new ideas and novel approaches to problems. So how do you come to the new ideas? As I, as I told you earlier, that all these three things are connected. So innovation thinking is connected to both design thinking and critical thinking. So how do you get the ability to come up with new ideas? You question. You question yourself, you question others, you keep on questioning your assumptions, you keep on questioning the current solutions. And that is how you come up with new ideas. So you, you do the first part of innovation thinking using design thinking. Uh, and, oh, sorry, you, uh, you, you come up with the new ideas, this first part, using critical thinking. And then you go on utilizing the design thinking to come up with novel approaches to the problems. And that is how you use all these three to come up with very viable and very innovative solutions to any kind of problems. And uh, like, I, like I told you, the gist of innovation thinking is about thinking of problems first, not your solutions. For example, uh, you, you might be expert in robotics and whatever problem you see, you come up with a robotic solution. Uh, I, I might have the problem of not having enough work to do the farming. So I might come up with a solution from the robotics perspective, and it might be very expensive. So 
why not just uh, why not just use automated tractors or something like that instead of creating a whole robotics a whole robotic system to do automatic farming so i think you're getting my point that even if you're expert in one field you do not how to look at the problems from this point of view from that field you actually need to focus the problem you need to have the most simplest solution for the problem not the most complex or not the most technology focused solution so now this is the overview of how these th three processes are created uh, and they are connected so you first think you, you find a problem uh, uh, you find and then you find a solution you do not automatically go to a solution and then go on finding a problem which fits the solution you first focus on problem then you go to solution and finally you go to design so as i told you uh, in the beginning design is not about drawing something on your paper design is about making your lives simpler designs could be physical designs could be intangible but design is something that comes up as a solution to make everything simpler and more accessible and finally we need a product for everything for example when you use uh, when you use all these three processes you come up with a product you do not just get a solution and sit there with the solution you have to come up with a product which actual people and users can use so for so now uh, so this this is my last slide about going forward and, and focusing on the on the indian innovation so here you can see a picture of uh, of two kids sitting in this box uh, this is the grocery box which is attached to a bicycle and uh, they're going to school and we all know what this is called this is called the jugad okay so jugad in india is a form of innovation is a form of very viable innovation but what we now need to do and how we can go ahead from this jugad is that we should use this design thinking critical thinking innovation thinking to come up with. so when you see such kind of jugad you should you should instantly be start thinking about a product to come up with for example here these kids are sitting uh, in this box in the bicycle uh, but you might uh, manufacture start manufacturing bicycle you might design and manufacturing bicycle which has a box in the back to for kids so you need to have a final product which you can come with you can manufacture and you can sell that product could be a physical product such as this bicycle with a box to sit or that product could be a software but finally you need to come up with a product through this design thing and peripheral processes so that is how this whole scenario of design is so thank you very much uh, and now ask me your questions thank you sir uh, thank you so much i would like all the people who have joined the meeting if they have any questions they can ask the questions to sir Uh, 
I can even go to the slides. Uh, I can go back and forth to the slides if you wish to see any slide. To if you have any question about any of the particulars. And you can also ask me question in Marathi language. तुम्हें मराठी इतपन प्रश्न विचारू शकता कारण मी मराठी मध्यमा शात शिकले एनी क्वेश्चन हेलो सर वे सर या सर कैन यू टेल मी द व्हाट इज द फ्यूचर फॉर एनएलपी इन मशीन लर्निंग करंटली फ्यूचर फॉर एनएलपी नेचुरल लैंग्वेज प्रोसेसिंग इन मशीन लर्निंग नेचुरल लैंग्वेज प्रोसेसिंग ओके आई एम आई एम मोर इनटू इमेज प्रोसेसिंग तो आई आई एम नॉट too much into it but i know that uh, in carnegie mellon university there is a whole institute which is the language learning institute and natural language processing is a big part of it and there are actually the students they are actually into some of the projects such as uh, helping uh, patients uh, medical patients through uh, ai so they have ai bots to actually use natural language processing uh for application purpose and they're actually helping them and guiding them through their uh hospitalizations and their treatments and how to take uh, their medications and things like that so uh from the applications point of point of view uh, there's a big future for that field okay sir Thank you very much. Sir, I would like to uh, ask. Hello, Namaskar. Sir. Yeah. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, sir, upon Marathi madhyam, upon Marathi madhyam, Shahid madhyam, Shiklat, ani Maharashtra tu na aaj upon American section gheta hat. Sir, amcha vidhyarthan karta, thodkyat. तुमची लाइफ स्टोरी तुम्ही कसे घडलात आणि कसा इथपर्यंत प्रवास आपला झाला थोडक्यात आपल्या विद्यार्थ्यांसाठी मोटिवेशनल तुला सांगितलं तर बरं होईल सर येस येस नक्कीच सो मी ठाण्याच आहे आणि मराठी माध्यमातून शिकलेलो आहे दहावी पर्यंत सेमी इंग्लिश नाही पूर्णपणे मराठी माध्यमातून आणि मला रोबोटिक्सची आवड शाळेत असल्यापासूनच होती सो मी आठवी नववीत असताना मी रोबोटिक्सच्या स्पर्धांमध्ये आय आय टीमध्ये वगैरे होतात आय आय टी बॉम्बेत वगैरे जसं की टेक फेस्ट त्याच्यात भाग घ्यायला सुरुवात केला आणि त्याच्यानंतर मी एक वर्ष इकडे रोबोटिक्सवर काम केलं आणि माझं स्वतःची एक छोटी लॅब तयार केली आणि त्याच्यानंतर माझं स्वतःचं रोबोटिक्स स्टार्टअप होतं भारतामध्ये जिकडे मी शाळेतल्या मुलांना मी रोबोटिक्स शिकवण्यासाठी किट्स पण तयार करत होतो आणि रोबोटिक्स पण शिकवत होतो आणि त्याच्यानंतर मी माझं अंडर ग्रॅज्युएट एज्युकेशन अमेरिकेतल्याच एका युनिव्हर्सिटीतून केलं आणि त्याच्यानंतर मी इथे कार्नेगी मेलॉनमध्ये आलेलो आहे सो कार्नेगी मेलॉन तुम्हाला माहितीच आहे जगातल्या टॉप पाच युनिव्हर्सिटीज आहे इंजिनिअरिंगमध्ये इकडे रोबोटिक्सचा भरपूर रिसर्च चालतो आणि फ्रॉम दी पॉईंट ऑफ व्ह्यू ऑफ माय एज्युकेशन माझं मराठी माध्यमातलं एज्युकेशन ते मला खूप जास्त उपयोगी पडलं असं माझं मत आहे कारण माझे जे मित्र इंग्रजी माध्यमातून आलेले होते त्यांना बेसिक कन्सेप्ट कळायलाच खूप त्रास झाला मी जेव्हा विज्ञान आणि गणिताच्या कन्सेप्ट शिकलो त्या मी माझ्याच भाषेमध्ये शिकलो त्यामुळे मला त्या शिकायला अतिशय सोप्या गेल्या आणि कन्सेप्च्युअली मला त्या डोक्यात नीट बसल्या जेव्हा मी माझ्या भाषेत शिकत सायन्स आणि मॅथ्समधल्या कन्सेप्ट विज्ञान आणि गणितातल्या कन्सेप्ट माझ्या भाषेत शिकत नाही तेव्हा 
आय डोंट नो पण त्या नीट कन्सेप्च्युअली शिकता येत नाहीत असं मला माझ्या इंग्रजी माध्यमातल्या मित्रांनी सांगितलं पण तसा प्रॉब्लेम मला झाला नाही आणि जेव्हा मी पुढे गेलो मला जेव्हा शिक्षण जसं पुढे मी इंजिनिअरिंगमध्ये कम्प्युटर सायन्समध्ये जात राहिलो तेव्हा त्या बेसिक कन्सेप्टचा मला खूप उपयोग झाला त्यामुळे आय वुड से दॅट लर्निंग इन माय ओन नेटिव्ह लँग्वेज वॉज वन ऑफ द बेस्ट थिंग्स दॅट हॅपन दॅट पेड माय पाथ टू गो टू सच बिगर युनिव्हर्सिटीज आणि जेव्हा मी दहावी झालो तेव्हा मला अर्थातच खूप काही मी इंग्लिश चांगला बोलत नव्हतो कारण मी मराठी माध्यमातून शिकलो होतो पण तसा मला कधीच प्रॉब्लेम आला नाही जसं तुम्ही काम करत राहता जसं तुम्ही त्या फील्डमध्ये जात राहता तसं तुम्ही भाषा शिकत जाता अँड दॅट इज हाऊ आय लर्न डेट सो या दॅट इज वॉट माय लाईफ स्टोरी फ्रॉम दी मराठी मिडियम स्कूल टू कारण गिव्ह लॉन थँक यू सर थँक यू सर मी विद्यार्थ्यांमधून सुकृत पंडित यांना विनंती करतो की सुकृत पंडित आहेत का येस सर सुकृत तुमची काय प्रतिक्रिया आहे आजच्या कार्यक्रमाबद्दल आणि तुमचा काही सरांना प्रश्न असेल तर प्रश्न विचारा किंवा तुमची प्रतिक्रिया व्यक्त करा आजच्या कार्यक्रमाबद्दल येस सर येस सर वेस सर आय एम फ्रॉम इलेक्ट्रिकल ब्रांच सर तुमचा आजचा लेक्चर होता तो खूपच चांगला होता आवडला आणि सगळं एक वेगळी कन्सेप्ट शिकायला मिळाली डिझाईन थिंकिंग बद्दल त्याबद्दल थँक्यू थँक्यू आणि तुम्ही ही डिझाईन थिंकिंगची जी प्रोसेस आहे ती माझ्या मते आता तुम्ही जेव्हा तुमचा लास्ट इयरचे प्रोजेक्ट असतात इंजिनिअरिंगचे प्रोजेक्ट ते करताना तुम्ही वापरा वापरण्याचा प्रयत्न करा खूपच त्याचा उपयोग होईल तुम्हाला प्रोजेक्ट करायला जेव्हा प्रोजेक्ट चा विषय शोधत असता आणि फायनल सोल्युशन शोधत असता तेव्हा तुम्ही जर का डिझाईन थिंकिंग वापरलं तर तुम्हाला खूप फायदा होईल येस सर थँक्यू अथर्व अथर्व कोवळे आहेत हे फर्स्ट इयरचे विद्यार्थी आहेत अथर्व आपल्याला कसा वाटला सेशन आपली काय प्रतिक्रिया एका मिनिटामध्ये अथर्व कोवळे चांगला होत सर खूप बरेच काही आपल्याला शिकायला भेटलं थिंकिंग वरती कस आपण प्रोसेस करू शकतो आणि डेव्हलपमेंट करू शकतो याच्यावर आपल्याला समजतो येस आपला ईमेल ऍड्रेस आहे सर आमच्याकडे अजून काही विद्यार्थ्यांचे प्रश्न असतील तर आम्ही निश्चितपणे ते प्रश्न आपणापर्यंत पोहोचवू येस नक्कीच श्रुती मॅडम यू कॅन कंटिन्यू ओके थँक्यू सर सर प्रोग्राम खरंच खूप छान होता सो इट्स लाईक डिफरंट वे टू थिंक फॉर न्यू प्रोजेक्ट आणि इट्स नॉट लाईक की पर्टिक्युलर आयडिया घेऊनच आपल्याला पुढे गेलं पाहिजे एखादा टॉपिक किंवा एखादा एक छोटीशी आयडिया पण आपण इफ यू वर्क ऑन इट तर आपल्याला नक्कीच त्यातून नवीन काहीतरी इनोव्हेशन नक्कीच मिळू शकतं सो थँक्यू फॉर दिस प्रोग्राम सर नाव गुड गुड मॉर्निंग वन्स अगेन ऑल सो ॲज ऑल ऑफ द गुड थिंग्स कम टू दी एंड सो दिस वर्कशॉप इज ऑल्सो कमिंग टू दी एंड now on the behalf of marshi parshuram college of engineering veneshwar i again take the opportunity to propose vote of thanks to the people who have directly and indirect, indirectly contributed to this workshop on design thinking critical thinking and innovation design organized by electronics and telecommunication department and institute innovation council of vpms marshi parshuram college of engineering i would like to express my gratitude to our resource person mr sarvesh karkhanis sir who spared his time from his busy schedule to grace this event thank you for inspiring and encouraging us and our students with your ideas and your words we are enlightened with your knowledge and our, and your presence we are thankful to our honorable chairman for motivating us to arrange such kinds of events i would like to thank our principal professor Avinash Pawar for his enthusiastic support 
I would like to thank our all department HODs for helping us. And also I would like to personally thank Mr. Ganesh Dewe sir, Mr. Audumbar Patkar and Mr. Rahate sir for helping me with this program. And lastly, I would like to thank you all the faculty members and students for attending this program and thank you all of you for your cooperation. With these warm words and kind message, I conclude today's program. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, thanks to Mr. Ashish Choudhury for coordinating uh, uh, with Sarvesh, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, thank see you. you. Sir. Goodbye. Yes, see you. Goodbye.